Okay, so hopefully by now you're getting good at the conservation of momentum in two dimensions. Just in case you aren't, tonight's question is questions are going to be more of them, okay, uh, including is it elastic or inelastic. So tonight's homework questions are not going to involve anything new. But I am going to introduce, begin to introduce a new concept that when I see you on the next day um, will develop further, okay? And it's not really a new concept. What I really want to do today is remind you of another one that we did in grade 11. It was uh, called the conservation of mechanical energy. Remember this? Conservation of mechanical energy. So in grade 11, we learned that there, there were three different types of, me of mechanical energy that we used. One type was known as kinetic energy. And all energy is usually a capital E with the subscript. So kinetic energy was EK. And hopefully you remember that it was equal to 1 half mv squared. And kinetic energy is known as energy of motion. So whenever an object is in motion, it's going to have kinetic energy. It's just its velocity squared multiplied by the mass. Energy, of course, is a scalar, so we don't have to worry about direction. And energy is measured in joules. So one type of mechanical energy was kinetic. A second type was gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy. And hopefully you remember, perhaps you remember, that potential energy is energy that's stored in an object. And the way you can tell if an object has stored energy is if you release it and it moves, it means it has stored energy. So if we were standing on the roof of a building and I was holding an unnamed student out over the edge, and one of you said, hey, does he have any uh, gravitational potential energy? So I let go to scratch my head as I ponder it, and he begins to fall. The fact that when I let go, he begins to move means that, yes, indeed, he did have gravitational potential energy. Okay? It, potential energy is energy that you do, wor work that you do against something that then builds up energy inside the object. And as soon as you let it go, that potential energy usually turns into kinetic energy of motion. Okay, so I did work against gravity to get that person to the roof, and so they have potential energy, potential to move when I release them, and as soon as I release them, gra they begin to fall. Okay, they, then their gravitational potential energy turns into kinetic. So gravitational potential energy, EG, is equal to MGH, if you remember where m is the mass of the object, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and h is the height to which they were raised. Okay, so those were two of our three energies that we used in grade 11. Our third one is also, is another potential energy, and it's elastic potential energy. This is the energy that you will find in things that are stretched like springs, elastic bands, um, your clothing maybe. Okay, so if I, I have to do work to stretch a spring, right, I'll do work to pull it out this way, to pull it out this way, and now that it's out there and I'm holding it, you know that as soon as I let it go, it's going to fly back in. Okay, so again, it has the potential to move, and when I release it, its potential energy will turn into kinetic. Elastic potential energy is equal to one half kx squared. Okay, what is the k? If only you were in front of me, you would answer this. And hopefully you would tell me the spring constant. Although uh, this section of the book sometimes will call it the force constant. It's the same thing. I think it's just a different author in this section of the book. Okay, and the x is the distance stretched or compressed. It doesn't matter whether it's stretched or compressed. Um, it doesn't go in as a positive or a negative. Distance stretched or compressed. Now, just to refresh you of the spring constant, 
Remember, it comes from Hooke's Law, F equals KX. So if I have a spring, the more force I put on an the more I stretch an object, the more force I need to put on that object to stretch it more, right? If I have a spring, it's easy to stretch at first, but then the more I stretch it, the harder it is to stretch. And so it creates a linear uh, graph. So this, and sometimes we wrote it, or we wrote it at least once, as um, it, you, it'll also see it as f equals minus kx. This is called Hooke's Law from grade 11. The same hook from biology. Okay? The negative here, this one is the force that the spring puts back on itself to try to get itself back in shape. This F, the positive one, is the force I put on it to stretch it out some distance X. So the positive one is me doing the work, so the force I'm putting on it and the distance it stretches or compresses would be in the same direction. But this one it's the force the spring is putting back on itself to try to get it back into shape. And so uh, the negative is because the X and the F are in different directions. Okay? Um, but back to the... And so it's a linear line where the slope of the line would be K. But what is K? K is... It's known as the spring constant. It tells us about the spring. The bigger, more heavy duty the spring, then the bigger the K, right? If I have the springs out of the shocks of a car, they're pretty big. They're going to take a lot of force to compress them. Um, the distance compressed won't change. The X uh, would be the same. So the K would have to be really big. Compared to the spring in this click pin, right, to stretch it the same distance as the shocks in my car, the force I would need would be significantly less, which means the K must be tiny. So the bigger the K, the more heavy duty the spring, the smaller the K the uh, lighter the, and easier to stretch the spring. So these are the three types of mechanical energy. So going back to our title, Conservation of Mechanical Energy, what it's saying is that the, inner, the total in, uh, initial energy of a system before an event must be equal to the total or should be equal to the total final. And so conservation of mechanical energy is saying 1 half mv initial squared plus mgh initial, plus one-half kx initial squared, should be equal to one-half mv final squared, plus mgh final, plus one-half kx final squared. So this is the conservation of mechanical energy. Notice it doesn't say the law of, because it isn't always true. Lots of times energy is lost. Like if it's a kid sliding down a slide, at the top they don't have any velocity, but they do have uh, gravitational potential energy, no spring. At the bottom it should be all velocity, no gravitational potential energy, no spring. So in theory, these two should equal each other, but that's assuming the slide is frictionless, and it isn't always. And so instead of using the conservation of mechanical energy, we often use the conservation of total energy. Conservation of total energy. And in a way, it's kind of cheating because we do 1 half mv initial squared plus mgh initial plus 1 half kx initial squared equals 1 half mv final squared mgh final plus one half kx final squared, and then to make it uh, total energy, we add plus e lost. Okay, so the only difference between mechanical energy and total energy is this e lost, and e lost is the energy loss due to work done by friction. Okay, it's the energy lost due to work done by friction. So if you think of it, work, work done, um, so this E lost is equal to W, and we know W is equal to F delta D cos theta. So that means E, and it's work done by friction, so this F is friction, delta D cos theta. So if, you're, if the kid on the slide is sliding over a certain distance, we can find its friction.